My goodness, what is this, the third or fourth time Olimar's crashed his ship? Like, he crashed it in Pikmin 1 after getting blindsided by an asteroid. He almost crashes it in Pikmin 2 due to turbulence. He crashed it off screen for unknown reasons in Pikmin 3. And he crashes it again in Pay hey Pikmin. Either Olimar is the worst luck imaginable, or the writers have gotten incredibly lazy because this is several crashes too many. Well, at least the tutorial still manages to do a good job. Everything about playing the game well is taught to you here as well as it can be. Though as a bit of a side note, did any of you ever wonder why this game is called Hey Pikmin? Well, it's because Olimar now shouts Hey before blowing his whistle. Imagine naming your entire game after a noise the main character makes. Also, his voice is now high-pitched even though it was a lot deeper in Pikmin 3 and even in certain cutscenes in this game. Am I nitpicking? Well, the shout happens constantly and is a consistent error, so I'd say I'm not. For a game on the 3DS, Hey Pikmin looks pretty damn good. It's not the best looking game on the 3DS, in fact that prize would probably go to one of the Mario and Luigi games, but it's still a colorful and fairly detailed game, especially with the artwork in the background, almost gives me Ori vibes. Also as a side note, this is the one Pikmin game that runs at 60fps in select moments, which I honestly find more hysterical than anything. Like the first two games couldn't run at 60 on the GameCube and the Wii, and apparently couldn't be bothered to run at 60 when bored to the Switch. And Pikmin 3 and 4 are also stuck at 30 on the consoles they reside on. But the spin-off on the 3DS? Yeah, sure, that can run everything but the normal gameplay smooth as butter. Okay, okay, I've stalled for long enough. It's time to address the elephant in the room. Hey, Pikmin is not a traditional Pikmin game. It's a 2D puzzle platformer with Pikmin elements. This is the main reason people choose to ostracize it from the Pikmin series, which after completing it, I honestly find rather petty. Just because a game is different from the others in its series doesn't mean it's automatically bad. Resident Evil 4 is one of the greatest games in history, and it's very different from previous Resident Evil games. Because of this, I'm not going to judge Hey Pikmin in comparison to the others. I'm going to judge it as a game on its own. Plus, let's face facts, a traditional Pikmin game would never have worked on the 3DS. It's honestly miraculous that games like Metal Gear Solid 3 and Xenoblade Chronicles even run at all on this thing. So Hey Pikmin choosing to do its own thing makes more sense than you'd think. With that said, how did the Pikmin handle? Quite well, actually. The five from Pikmin 3 are all here, with purples and whites being MIA completely this time. And everything that was good about them before is retained here, with some of them getting new additions. For instance, reds are not only fire resistant, but they can also put out any fires in your way. Yellow's ability to be thrown higher is the most effective it's ever been, since it covers both screens on the 3DS, allowing them to nab items and collectibles and take out enemies that may be out of reach. And the Wingens can now carry Olimar after falling down for a bit, acting as a pseudo-glide down pits or through wind currents. Cool additions, if I do say so myself. Also, after every stage, all the Pikmin you have with you at the end are sent to the Pikmin Park, a small side area. There's not much here other than letting the Pikmin you collect search for exclusive treasures and sparklium, but it's cute nonetheless, and fun to see it fill up with more and more Pikmin. Plus, if you have the Pikmin amiibo, you can actually summon Pikmin from the park if you're ever in a jam. That's cool too. Speaking of sparklium, that's the main collectible of this game. It's the fuel source for Olimar's ship, and you can find it either around the stages, in these little sparklium springs that are only accessible once per day, and on the various treasures you collect. 
Each stage has around two to four treasures hidden in them, and they honestly rival the ones in Pikmin too, both in terms of what you find, such as pieces of a toy robot and even NES and Game Boy cartridges, and the names given to them, like naming a pen a peace missile, naming an eraser an evidence pulverizer, naming a cell phone a work-life imbalancer, getting a little too real there, hey, Pikmin, and my personal favorite, naming a yo-yo a quid pro quo-yo. Try saying that five times fast. The Sparklium also serves as an upgrade system. Your end goal is 30,000 Sparklium, but there are also milestones that give you upgrades when reached, such as more health and longer jetpack usage. It's not much, but it's nice to have these upgrades. Oh yeah, Olimar has a jetpack in this game, because apparently in the Pikmin universe, jumping is strictly prohibited outside of a cutscene. While I was able to get used to it, the jetpack is pretty clunky. It's not like you're able to fly with it or anything, it only propels you a short distance into the air. And with the level design of all the levels, having a normal jump would have been just as good, if not better. Anyways, I should also bring up the Piclopedia, and while this is probably the weakest version of it, it still retains some of its charm. All the enemies and treasures are logged here, with Olimar commenting on all of them. Some are simple, scientific remarks about the wildlife and structures, with the SS Dolphin 2 chiming in occasionally. Yeah, his new ship is also a sentient robot. And others are him reminiscing about his family, both happily and not so happily. Also, someone in the comments section of the previous video said that Olimar should leave the president after all the shite he was put through in Pikmin 3. And apparently, this game reveals just why Olimar is still working for him. All because he happened to do something nice for him that one time. I mean, sure, whatever floats your boat, Olimar, but you gotta realize he's still a scumbag, right? Most of the levels in Hey Pikmin aren't anything special, but there are two in particular that stand out. The first one being Over the Wintry Mountains. It's a slide level down a snowy hill where you take out enemies and obstacles at breakneck speed. Quite the adrenaline rush with some neat music. The other one is the Bed of Fallen Leaves. It's a Balloon Trip reference, and one of the treasures in the level is an NES cartridge of Balloon Trip. Love it when Nintendo references old properties. So, what are the completion requirements this time around? Well, a few things. Getting 30,000 Sparklium and defeating the final boss are just the first steps. There's also filling out the Piclopedia with all the treasures and enemies, which you'll probably have once you beat every level. And there are also Amiibo exclusive treasures, which I ultimately chose to view as optional since it was tied to Amiibo, and the game didn't seem to count them for 100% completion. Plus, the Pikmin Amiibo I ordered would take a week to arrive, and with the release of Pikmin 4 fast approaching, I couldn't afford to wait that long. That leaves the last thing required for 100%. The Gold Pikmin Badges. These badges are earned by finding all 20 Pikmin in a level, getting to the end without getting any of them killed, and not using the Pikmin amiibo to summon any more. This is actually a pretty neat challenge. While it did lead to several rage-inducing moments, it never felt truly unfair. And when you finally get that one good run where all the Pikmin are saved, it feels satisfying. Solid challenge all around. You may have noticed that I've neglected the bosses up until now, and there's a good reason for that. They all suck. You know those normal enemies you encountered in the previous games like Bulborbs and Fiery Blowhogs? Well, they were promoted to boss status in this game, and it really shows why that shouldn't have been done. All eight of the normal bosses are simple as avoid attack. It is a certain way to stun it. Go to town on it with your Pikmin. Rinse and repeat. Bear in mind, this is after Pikmin 3 gave us a lineup of really good bosses. So seeing these aggressively simple bosses is kind of disheartening. Even the Emperor Bulbax, while intimidating when filling up both screens, suffers from this same problem. And considering how dangerous it was in Pikmin 1 and 2, that's disappointing. But the one good thing about them is that they have pretty good music. Not all of them, but most of them do have some good bots that soften the blow a bit.
Okay, maybe I slightly lied earlier because there is one good boss in this game. That being the final boss, the Berserk Leech Hydro. This fight has three phases, and while all of them are pretty simple, they're intense enough to make the fight work. Plus, the impressive scale of the creature coupled with some pretty cool music for each phase makes the fight even more intense. Aww, no matter how many times he leaves them, Olimar still cares about the Pikmin. It's bittersweet, but necessary if he wants to see his family again. Though I guess by now, the Pikmin are also part of his family, and they feel just the same. While I hadn't heard anything too bad about this game going in, I knew that fans had some ambivalence towards this game. Very few actually care to remember it, while the rest act like it never existed. And after completing it, hell, while completing it, my only reaction was, seriously? This is the game that every fan calls the worst Pikmin game. This is the game that people hate to remember. This is the game that Shea Frills will not talk about despite being willing to plug Pikmin f bloom like yeah it's not great but this is nowhere near a bad game maybe not a good pikmin game but this is a perfectly all right game in its own right like the most negative emotion i felt when playing this aside from the occasional frustration over getting the gold badges was boredom and it wasn't even close to the amount of boredom i felt when playing sonic chronicles or sonic rivals 2 let it be known that i am not a purist of anything in fact, I genuinely hate purists for how obnoxious they can be. Obviously, I understand people wanting a franchise to be a certain way since that's what the franchise made its name on and that's what they love about it. But every purist I've seen takes it way too far to the point where they'll dismiss a game as lesser just because it's not like the others in its series, regardless of its actual quality, which is the worst way to view any game in my opinion. Don't judge a game based on what it isn't or chooses not to be. Judge it for what it is. And for what Hey Pikmin is, this is not the worst Pikmin game. 
For me, Pikmin 2 is actually much worse, as blasphemous as that sounds, because it has a lot more issues with it that genuinely make me feel worse when playing it than when I played Hey Pikmin. And for any Pikmin purists in the audience who are still trying to say it's the worst because it's not a traditional Pikmin game, let me put it this way. Hey Pikmin knows it can't be a traditional game, and doesn't try to be. It chose to be its own thing with the Pikmin elements put into it. Whereas Pikmin 2 is trying to be a traditional Pikmin game, but fails as often as it succeeds. But either way, I think we can all agree that Pikmin 1 is better than both. With that said, there's only one Pikmin game left to cover before our series ends. And no, it's not you, Pikmin Bloom. You don't count. As of writing this, Pikmin 4 releases in 5 days, so I'll be waiting in my closet for it, because I know the Pikmin 2 fanboys are really going to be on me after this video. See you next time, everybody!